Good evening, and welcome to our online worship service this Christmas Eve. My name is Matt Benton. I am the pastor here at Bethel Church, and I want to welcome you if you are a part of the Bethel Church family or if you are watching this from Woodbridge or places near and far. Here at Bethel Church, we are about loving God, loving one another, and loving your neighbor. And we hope that through this online worship service, we might be able to love the God who loved us so much. He came to be with us in Jesus Christ. Wasn't it such a special treat to have our bell choir be a part of our worship service this evening? I want to thank them for sharing their gifts and their talents. And to thank all of the soloists and musicians who contributed to tonight's special worship service. I want to remind you that at the conclusion of this service, we are going to have a Zoom room open so that we can gather virtually in order to sing Silent Night with candlelight. If you weren't able to come by the church office this week to pick up a uh, Christmas Eve packet that had candles in it, you are welcome to find any source of light in your house. If you have some candles that you can use, if you have glow sticks, if you have flashlights, or just want to use your cell phone flashlight. Anything you have that can reflect light, that can give off light, and remind us that the light of the world has come, and we are to reflect that light. And now, would you join me in prayer? Loving God, Moved by the coming of Christ to our lives, we seek to be your people. Help us to live in faithful covenant with you and with one another. Let the peace of Christ guide us, and let Christ's message in all its richness live in our hearts, that we may praise you without ceasing. Amen.
We light the first candle as a symbol of Christ our hope. We light the second candle as a symbol of Christ the way. We light the third candle as a symbol of Christ our joy. We light the fourth candle as a symbol of the Prince of Peace. We light the Christ candle in remembrance of that tiny baby born in a stable in Bethlehem.
Hear now the Gospel of the Nativity, according to St. Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel of the Lord said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. 
you will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Would you pray with me? Almighty and all loving God, in calling us to worship you this night, you have already spoken to us. So as we turn to your word, read and proclaimed, we simply ask that you continue speaking and that you give us eyes to see you and ears to hear. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Before it was good news for the shepherds, it was good news for the sheep. So we're here tonight to hear a familiar story, a comforting story, an amazing story. We're here to hear the greatest story ever told. It's a story we tell every year, and it's a story we should tell every year. It's a story that's as comforting to us as mom's Christmas cookies, or going down the stairs one by one, one step at a time to see what Santa has brought, or singing Silent Night with the flicker of hundreds of candles illuminating a church. We've spent months preparing for this night, for this day, for this celebration. We put hours and hours into decorating our homes and our trees and our yards. We spent hours and hours searching for the right gifts for our loved ones. We spent hours and hours wrapping those presents, or if you're like me, minutes and minutes putting them in gift bags. We've come to church and sung carols, we've worshiped and sung carols, We've listened to Christmas music. We've completed our Advent calendars and read our Advent devotions or the Countdown to Christmas Disney storybook. We've waited, we've prepared, and now the time is finally here. It's time to celebrate. It's time to enjoy. It's time to celebrate and to enjoy this story. This story of glad tidings, of great joy that shall be to all people this story that is good news for us. But before it's good news to us, it's good news to the sheep. We tell this story every year, and I'm sure y'all have heard it many times. At the very least, we hear it every year in a Charlie Brown Christmas special. And I'm sure you have thought a lot about the characters involved in the story, about Mary and Joseph and their long walk to Bethlehem all the while Mary was pregnant, their failed search to find a place to sleep and the chaos that night must have been for them. We think about the angel choir and what that might have looked like and what that might have sounded like. But have you ever thought about the shepherds, who they were, what they were doing out on that hillside that night? I think oftentimes we think of the shepherds as being dirty, poor farmers. And indeed, there is deep meaning and beauty to our God sending word to the lowest of the low that their Savior had come. But what if I told you that we could pretty well reconstruct who these people were who saw and heard the angels hark? You see, around about that, the time that Jesus was born, there was a regulation that flocks of sheep could only graze in the wilderness. They weren't allowed near the city. There was one exception to this rule, one exception to this regulation. There was only one type of sheep that would have been in the fields nearby, that would have been in the same country. And there was only one type of shepherd who would have been watching over that one type of sheep who would have been watching over those flocks and would have been, been within walking distance of the city of Bethlehem that night. And they weren't really shepherds at all. The only sheep that were allowed to graze just outside the city were the sheep who were raised for the temple. 
Now, it's not like the temple authorities kicked all the other shepherds off the land so that they could run their own personal farm. I mean, it's kind of like that, but they did it for a reason. The temple needed special sheep, and they couldn't be confused with any other sheep. You see, the sheep that were being raised for the temple were being raised for temple sacrifice. They were being raised to be sacrificed at the Passover, which meant they needed to be spotless, pure, without blemish. So the shepherds that would keep watch over the temple flocks weren't really shepherds at all. He was a priest doing shepherd duties. And when Luke says that he was watching over the flock, what he means is he was up in a tower. There was a tower that had been erected so that the shepherd priest could watch over the temple flock. And this tower had a name, the Migdal Eder. It was called the Tower of the Flock. And it is to this place that the angels appeared to announce to these particular shepherd priests the glad tidings of great joy. And here's the crazy thing about this. In Micah 4.8, it says, And you, O Tower of the Flock, Hill of Daughter Zion, to you it shall come. The former dominion shall come the sovereignty of daughter Jerusalem. Ancient commentary on this verse said that when the Messiah came, it would be announced first at the Migdal Eder. And so right after Jesus is born, we see angels appearing at the Migdal Eder to announce that the Messiah had come. Now, these shepherd priests would have known this scripture and the commentary about it. They would have had the entire book of Micah memorized. And they would have known what that verse meant. They would have known how it had been interpreted. They know what is happening. Which is probably why their first reaction is to be terrified. I think I would be. Like, I get that they've waited for this and been preparing for this, but when that moment comes, I mean, that could be scary. Is this really happening? I wish I'd worn my better shepherding robe. The angels continue. I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. Now there's one detail in the angel's announcement that would have stuck out like a sore thumb to these shepherd priests. And that's that they would have found the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes. Swaddling clothes. Now, sometimes we read it like it says in the NRSV, the version that I read from tonight, bands of cloth. And we assume that Mary and Joseph just put whatever they could find around the baby Jesus. But if you think about it, that wouldn't really be noteworthy. Assuming Jesus wasn't the only baby born in Bethlehem that night, wouldn't all of the babies have been wrapped in some sort of cloth? The manger part might have been helpful to these shepherd priests seeking the Messiah, but saying that the baby is, will be wearing clothes is kind of redundant and not terribly helpful, don't you think? It's only helpful if Bands of cloth or swaddling clothes refers to something more specific, which I think it does. Remember how I said the sheep that those shepherd priests were watching over were being raised for use at the Passover, and they had to be without blemish? Well, one of the things the shepherd priests did to ensure that they had no blemishes was to wrap them in bands of cloth. They wrapped them in swaddling clothes. And these swaddling clothes were a particular type of cloth. So what the angels are saying is that when you go into Bethlehem to look for the baby, you'll find him wearing the same bands of cloth as the sheep that you're watching over. Quick aside, you might be wondering, how in the world would Mary and Joseph have gotten the special bands of cloth that were reserved for the temple sheep? Well, Zechariah, Elizabeth's husband, was a priest. And Mary had been with them earlier in the story. So might Zechariah have 
procured some of this special cloth and gave it to Mary and Joseph for the baby Jesus? But it's here, in this detail, that this story becomes good news for the sheep. And it's here, in this detail, why it's okay for the shepherd priests to leave the flock to go into the city. You see, it's beyond crazy that they would leave. They had one job. Hashtag, they had one job. Watch over the temple sheep to make sure no harm comes to them. And these are very special sheep. They're being raised as a Passover sacrifice. It would be very bad if, while the shepherd priests left to go into the city, that the special sheep would wander off as sheep are wont to do, or if they were stolen because they were valuable and could be resold for a good sum of money, or if a predator came along to hurt or kill the very special sheep, all of the things that could happen and were the reason why these sheep were watched over in the tower of the flock at all times. So why on earth would these shepherd priests leave? Because they've just been told the lambs that they are watching over are no longer necessary. Because the new Passover lamb has just been born. The story is good news for the sheep because it means they won't have to die. Sacrifice in a temple in order to make our atonement with God. Because Jesus has come and he will be savior of the world. And he will make our atonement with God. It's not that the shepherd priests are abandoning the flock. It's that they're going to the only flock that matters. This story is good news for the sheep. And it's good news for the shepherds. And it's good news for us too. You see, part of what Luke is doing in this story is showing us that what God does at Christmas is nothing short than accomplishing the salvation of all the world. No longer will we need to make ourselves crazy trying to live up to a law that we would never uphold. No longer will we need to busy ourselves trying to be faithful covenant partners when we will never be anything but unfaithful. No longer will we need animal sacrifice to make us right with God, to show us that we are right with God, or be a sign to us that for the moment we are right with God. God has come to accomplish the thing that we could never do on our own. God has come to accomplish for us our salvation once and for all. And what's more, this isn't just glad tidings of great joy for the shepherd priests, for those of us who are in church, for those of us who knew what it meant to look on at what happened. Think about it. On that hill were gathered shepherd priests who knew all about the Migdal Eder, and what the angel announcement meant. And there are also sheep who couldn't possibly have had any idea what had just been done for them at the moment of the Savior's birth. The angels say these glad tidings of great joy are for all people. All. People who knew what their appearance at the Migdal Ader meant and those who had no idea. People who know, know that Christmas is Jesus' birthday, the day when God came to be with us as Emmanuel, and for those who are just excited about the presence. People who know that they are loved by God and seek to live out their love through, for him through discipleship in the church, and those who think they have no use for organized religion. Behold, on this night, we proclaim great, glad tidings of great joy for all people. Our God has drawn near to us. Our God has accomplished our salvation through the giving of his son. Our God has come to us, Emmanuel, and our God is still drawing near. Our God draws near to us through the power of the Holy Spirit in worship. Our God draws near to us through the sacrament of Holy Communion. Our God draws near to us through prayer. And our God draws near to us through prevenient grace all throughout our lives. God draws near to us this night. God is drawing near to you and to me. And God is drawing near to your family, to your friends and to your neighbors. 
It's the greatest thing we've ever heard. It's the greatest story ever told. It is glad tidings of great joy for the sheep, for the shepherd priests, for you, for me, and truly for all people. Thanks be to God. Amen. to receive the sacrament of Holy Communion this night that has been celebrated and consecrated from our sac sermon and sacrament service earlier this month. Let us prepare our hearts to receive what has already been consecrated for us. 
Almighty and all loving God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. In the fullness of time, you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. And at his birth, the angels sang, Glory to you in the highest, and peace to your people on earth. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. As Mary and Joseph went from Galilee to Bethlehem and there found no room, so Jesus went from Galilee to Jerusalem and was despised and rejected. As in the poverty of a stable Jesus was born, so by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. As your word became flesh born of woman on that night so long ago, so on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. We remember that as this bread was broken and this cup was lifted in our sermon and sacrament service earlier this month, you poured out your spirit, making them the body and blood of Christ for those gathered in that setting and for us as we gather in our homes. In the same manner, we ask that by the outpouring of your spirit, we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. This is the bread of heaven, and this is the cup of salvation. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray as Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You are invited to receive the elements that have been consecrated. If you take your single serving communion cup and peel back the first layer, you will have access to the wafer. If you peel back the second layer, you will have access to the juice. Receive now the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given for us.
And now we will continue and conclude our worship service in a Zoom room so that the congregation can gather virtually in order to sing Silent Night. So I invite you now to move to the device that you will use for uh, Zoom. The link to the Zoom room, the Zoom information has been put into the YouTube chat if you need that. And we will give a little bit of time to allow everyone to enter, uh, but let us continue our worship service gathered together in a virtual Zoom space. <laughs> 